y'all. It's Jess with Beatific. I wanted to give y'all like a kind of a background history of me and why I'm doing all this anti-inflammatory stuff uh, to kind of help y'all out. You like my uh, little splatter stain on my seat? It's from my smoothie this morning. It just jumped out of the picture. Just didn't want to even be there anymore. I have scoliosis, and which is curvature of the spine. It was idiopathic and structural, which means I don't know where it came from or if there was an underlying cause to it. Structural is where the rib cage, one side of it, it twists backwards. So mine, since my thoracic is to the right, it went out like that. Like a little bit down, but mostly just around. This one spread out a little bit and this one got closer together. Um, I think it was at about a 54 on the top and 32, 30, some, some, 30 something, low 30s on the bottom, the opposite way. So it was an S curve. And I got diagnosed with that when I was nine. And I was in three different kinds of braces. Uh, I forget what they were called now, but one I had to just wear while I was sleeping and one I had to wear or two it was two different kinds of the 23 hour brace needless to say I did not wear that for 23 hours I was a young girl very impressionable all that so looking back now I definitely would have done that 24 hours I mean, I would have been in it all the time. I would have been uncomfortable. But I had the surgery when I was 17 and I had the Harrington rods placed from thoracic disc five to lumbar disc or well, vertebra um, two. And then, and I just want to add in like, I really did not have very much pain at all. Like occasional discomfort when I was working out a lot. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Yeah, I'm doing. Hello. Um, but I did not have any significant discomfort or pain before the first surgery. And so I didn't really think anything about it. I just went on with my life, danced, played other sports, was involved in a lot of stuff. Don't force me. It's pretty sad when your husband says that. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Mine. Getting a show. <laughs> mine? 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 Is it a question, honey? <laughs> the seagulls. Put up, put up. From Nemo. Come on. I know, babe. I'm just kidding. You're a punk. Um, you're a punk. 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 you Back to the point of the video. I think you have to start all over again. Nope, not gonna do it. This is the second time. Third time. <laughs> <laughs> but right after about, uh, probably about a year and a half to two years after, of course I had like the first part of recovering from surgery pain and you know, muscle soreness while doing physical therapy and all that kind of stuff, which was extensive physical therapy to say the least. And from everywhere, from my neck down. <laughs> so while I was doing all of this, the pain grew at, to about a really bad ache. And then at about five years, it was like a really hard stabbing and all around my lumbar, like right where the rods ended. So I started kind of worry. And at this time I did not have health insurance. So I just decided to grin and bear it and kept working as a veterinary technician. 
which I was at that time, and one doctor I worked for actually just kept saying that, you know, I was reinforced, kind of said it jokingly, this punk's eating my mangoes, man! Look at this kid! What are you doing? <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, really have to try to keep my eyes open when I'm laughing really hard. Um, so, anyways, don't get yourself a hickey. Where was I? insurance at the time. Is that the right place that we stopped at? Um, <laughs> pretty sure it is, but I'm not, not positive. Sorry, the editor's gonna have a lot of work. Yes. Yes, she is. Um, so, I can't make videos with him in the car. So, I'll just start it right here. This is the serious take, okay? Take 45. So I had no insurance. I was like just dealing with the pain as best as I could, taking any and every kind of opiate, whether it be with a doctor or whether it be from somebody I knew or buying it from somebody I didn't know. Uh, I became reliant on those for many years and they only made it worse, honestly. Of course, they numbed me and stuff, but they they caused other issues. Plus, they just caused referred pain. Like they they block the receptors in your brain, and they don't allow the signal to get through that there's pain. So therefore, your body doesn't fight for the pain. I had been on those. I had been on tons of muscle relaxers. Um, I drank heavily uh, to combat the pain, which made it worse because I was always dehydrated the next day. Um, but therefore I drank more. Uh, so all while doing this, I was talking to this guy and, <laughs> um, I went up North and lived with him for a little while. While up there, we decided to, you know, kick our butts into gear, try some T90X, eat healthier, like lean chicken, turkey meat, whatever. So we were doing P90X together. And I even got, I was super excited because, super excited. <laughs> I was really excited. Um, just the fact of when I was like doing the yoga and stuff, I got up to be able to do a triangle pose and it just felt so good to be able, don't do those signs in my video. It was a triangle. Nope. No. No. <laughs> no. No. <sighs> that works. That's not a triangle. I like the shape of it. <laughs> um, so... He likes to point them out. I don't know why. <laughs> that was 
the weird part. <laughs> we were doing all that stuff. Um, it it kind of loosened up and everything. It felt a lot better, and then just all of a sudden, it got extremely worse. And extremely worse, meaning that from 2010 till 2013, I wasn't really using my right leg. Um, 2012 Christmas present to myself was a cane to be able to get me around like easier and to more places so that way I wouldn't have to be locked up in the house. But anyways, so I started to go see doctors up north because there was a great institution called Rothman Institute and they're amazing people. They really are. Um, they know what they're doing. The guy looking at my MRI of my spine was just, he, he kind of like looked around and was like, whose film is this? And when I said mine, he, he just kind of did a double take and he was like, you're kidding, right? And I was just like, no, why? And he was like, how old are you? Um, 25, why? And <laughs> you can't even look at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and he was looking at it and he was just like, this spine looks like an 80 year old. And I was just like, that's really nice. <laughs> like, awesome. So I proceeded to talk to him. Um, I had started getting really worried. Like I didn't want another surgery or anything. So I was trying to find every out other than that possible and <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> it's all natural baby <laughs> and then we moved actually back down here down to Memphis Tennessee in 2011 and I started getting well, I got my first injection uh, in Delaware. Uh, I guess the nerve block. nerve block is what they call it. And I mean, I was completely numb there until, you know, it lasted about a week. It was amazing. I was super excited that, you know, he said some people it lasts for like years, some people days, whatever. So I was really hopeful because I'd had like a couple of days completely pain free and was very hopeful that that would last longer than it did. And it didn't. It was about a week. And it wore off and it was tenfold when it came back. So, <clears throat> going forward from there, we moved down to Memphis again. And I had several more injections. I saw several more doctors. Um... I finally found one that told me that at right where my rods ended at L34, I had a ruptured disc. So they went in there and did a micro discectomy where they go in, just like really teeny tiny scar and go in and like <laughs> suck it out, cut it off kind of thing. Sorry, it was a six week recovery, full recovery. And so that was bull crap. I went back to work at three weeks because I was able to stay awake. And at that time I was mainly receptioning, but I was teching about three days, two days, three days a week. But I was mainly receptioning. So I figured I'd be fine. I was completely wrong. And when I went back to the doctors with all this pain and stuff, but it was getting worse and all this kind of stuff, after they had even released me to go back to work, they were like, oh no, 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 no. Six weeks is the time that you should be at home. Three to six months is the full recovery time. So that probably screwed up my chances right there of healing properly. Um, so the discs while healing ended up, the vertebra ended up collapsing and squeezing the disc so much that the second doctor, the second opinion that I received was from an orthopedist and he suggested to extend the rods which would correct the lumbar curve and would prevent any movement down there and would space out the vertebra more on that area to relieve some of the pressure on the nerves and everything. 
So I was just like, oh my gosh, this sounds like it can fix it. And I didn't really think at the time about like a domino effect kind of thing. Keep going down, keep going up with the rods. I never thought about that. I just thought it was kind of like a, I need something to help me. So I got that done and he fused from L2, the ends of my other rods, down to the end of L4. So I have L5 left and then my sacrum. And then I have from T4 up through my neck, my cervical spine. So now since that surgery, so it was 03 for the big time surgery. 2012 for the microdiscectomy and 2013 for the um, repair, but it wasn't a really a repair at all. It was a worsening of things. Um, since that surgery, everything has moved. Like I felt it shifting. I've had excruciating pain pretty much every day, um, and my pain my pain level has has always been kind of high, but it's changed ever since that surgery. Um, I'm on a scale of like zero, which is nothing, to like 10 being in agony. Um, I'm like constantly at an eight or higher. Right now, I'm at an eight. So I've just kind of learned to deal with it, move around when I'm uncomfortable, whatever. I'm standing most of the time because that's like really the only <clears throat> position I can get into is standing and laying down. And laying down is getting uncomfortable. But, back to the point again. Oh, so, while everything was shifting, I started getting more headaches. Um, and probably about a, a month, if, if not like a month and a half after the surgery. Like my hips, my lower abs, and my legs. Every single muscle was going like this like just contracting and shaking and spasming so it was uncontrollable I couldn't stop it um, and so I talked to the doctor about this I called him left a very concerned message with him and the nurse and everything and they said that it was perfectly normal it's just the nerves getting used to all the feelings again and it should go away no problem all that kind of stuff don't worry about it. Crazy ban. Anyways, um, so I continued to wait for it to go away and it just kept getting worse. Um, it, my left leg stopped, but my right leg, excuse me, the leg that I've been having troubles with the sciatica and not being able to walk on and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quickly because we just got home. When it moved just through my right leg, I thought that it was going away. Well, it jumped up to, it included my arm, my right arm, mainly forearm, wrist, hand area, and some up here. Then it, I got kind of concerned. I was just like, okay, well, I don't know how a lumbar, <laughs> shaking his butt at me. I don't know how a lumbar surgery would have anything to do with way up there, but I did feel this thing shifting, so maybe it's just a spasticity. So I just called in again, let them know that it was happening, you know, make a record of it, which there is none now, which is extremely strange to me. Then when I called back up there to tell them that now my neck, my chin, and my neck and everything were involved. I don't know what these muscles are. but that muscle right there and then the muscle right behind your ear that latches down right here they grab and so my head kind of goes over but at the same time my chin goes towards this shoulder and my shoulder kind of draws up all that <clears throat> excuse me then my shoulder started going backwards and being pulled 
down and everything. My abdomen, my diaphragm um, got involved. They would just grab and then let go. Grab and let go. I mean, it would be in different intervals. It would be ranging, and all of this would be happening one time. Every single thing on the side of my body. Spasming and, and excruciating pain, especially my neck and everything. Because that would stay the longest, it seemed. Um, and when he told me that's not normal, but I don't know what it is over the phone. Like, he wouldn't make an appointment with me or act like he was going to put any effort into it at all. So, I was just like, okay, well, I'm giving up on you as a doctor. So, I went back to see a neurologist, a new neurologist, and I got put on everything ranging from muscle relaxers again to... MS, Parkinson's, seizure, medication, um, mood stabilizers, I guess, like Ativan and stuff like that. Um, just anything that would calm my muscles down, calm my brain down, which causes the muscles to calm down. Um, well, none of that worked. I was on that for several months, and every single one of those medications had horrible, horrible, horrible side effects. My mood was awful. I could not sleep whatsoever. I could not control my moods. Um, it, it was just crazy. One of them caused pixelized vision. Yeah. It, I mean, like it was crazy. I was seeing like just randomly it would happen. Um, I was not driving at all during this time. So no worries. Uh, when I started having the neck thing, I completely stopped driving. I didn't know when it was going to happen, what brought it on at this point, anything like that. So I didn't want to endanger myself or others. You're welcome. But so it ended up being like my jaw and stuff and lip even does it sometimes still too. Um, and everything still does it. It's just, it's calmed down quite a bit since I started going to the chiropractor again uh, but after stopping all that medication it really got bad again and it was cold too which if I'm cold it immediately happens immediately um, even this morning in the farmers market I forgot my sweater my trusty go to sweater that I always bring with me because I know it's freaking cold in that store and Kroger for some reason I don't know why they keep it at like below 50 I swear it is I swear it's what it feels like to me anyways but so I like to bundle up when I go in there well I mean like oh, in winter I'm walking around with like a snowboarding coat and like two beanies and gloves and you know two pairs of socks a pair of leggings and a pair of pants and still cold it was crazy like I could not figure out how to stop these things so, um, all the while th this became more of a thing for me to worry about than my back, but all the while I was still in excruciating pain from that. So I found online, I do not do this a lot, but actually Ryan's dad found online cervical dystonia. That was it. It was everything that I was describing. It had the same triggers. It had the same symptoms because usually it's caused from, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, basal or basal ganglia or ganglia. I don't know. I did not have any of that going on. I didn't have any problems with my brain and the neurologist said that my cervical spine was fine. Well, when I started going back to the chiropractor after I picked up the phone to call in more medicated lotion, which was like tramadol, baclofen, cyclobenzaprine, um, lidocaine, and something else. 
all mixed together so it's compounded into this thing like going through your skin and um so after i was i just picked up the phone to call in an order a refill for that and to make an appointment to get back on pain medications because i i just couldn't handle it anymore and i started thinking and i was just like no i can't do this i was like i've got to try something different so i called the chiropractor and went back to the same one that I actually saw when I was way younger. It's Johnson Chiropractic here in Memphis, Tennessee. And so I had my x-rays taken and everything by him by his, on his my first visit. And he usually lets the people come back to discuss the x-rays and to adjust for the first time. However, I was in the middle of an episode that day. And I was explaining it to him. And, of course, I was in tears and he could tell that I really needed some help um, intensive help so he went ahead and talked to me about mine and went ahead and did adjustments and everything that day and I'm so thankful that he did because even that day it felt better the only way that I can describe the way that my neck feels constantly is that it's like jammed like your atlas is supposed to be, let's see what's flat to this camera, 45, about there, and mine is flat. <laughs> That's all like scrunched up and cause and like my, I have no curve in my neck. Your, your curve is supposed to be like a C curve, like a banana is what they say. And mine has like no curve whatsoever. I'll post it. I'll go ahead and add some pictures of my x-rays real quick. Since going to the chiropractor, I started last, it's 2014 now, I started last November, <coughs> excuse me, and since then my episodes have gone from multiple times a day and being housewritten at 27 to being able to at least walk around occasionally putting weight on this leg a lot more than I was able to a couple years ago and I now know if I have these rods this hardware completely removed from my body like I know that there's not a guarantee of yes everything will be reversed and it'll be wonderful and all this I don't want to romanticize it I don't want to fairy tale it but at the same time I know that it's going to be better than what it is now and I guess that's really the point I want to make is think things through before you do anything surgically okay if there's a better way to do it find it and surgery doesn't add anything to your life it doesn't they added metal to mine that was it do I need that no has it helped me no it's caused more issues and it's still causing issues I have bulge discs in my neck like my last disc on my lumbar like is uh, I can feel it all the time I don't know what it's doing but it's numbness tingling all that kind of stuff I can feel the rods like creaking together it's it's the most uneasy thing it is nerve-wracking to say the least Up, upon all of the nerve-wracking um but yeah it's it's put a damper on like my my spirit you know like I am an outdoorsy person I want to go and do anything and everything outdoors I mean hiking bungee jumping skydiving whitewater rafting again luckily I got to do that once when I was younger um but I just want to go and live and thrive especially now now that we're on this lifestyle and that was one of the main points I wanted to get to was I finally made my way around to it there it is right there um is that if you do have a chronic <coughs> I think I just swallowed a bug. <coughs> if you do have a lot of pain and stuff, this really does help you. Getting off of the milk and dairy products and 
especially the meats and everything, you'll lose weight, which will in turn lessen what your body is carrying and where the weight, depending on where the weight is and where the pain is, I mean, it, it's all related. I just really hope that and I'll post some of my uh, dystonic episodes as well as like one compilation uh, here pretty soon. And I am working on the lotions, people. I'm so sorry about my procrastination. But when I have to pick and choose the activities that I need or want to do, some things get pushed to the back burner. Um, I've made two so far and I kind of want to make three or four. So I will get that out to you as soon as possible. Uh, I think I said everything that I needed to say, but I think my phone's about to die. So I'm trying to hurry up. Uh, if I have anything to add, I'll just add it in the dystonic compilation that I make. Yeah, if you don't know what dystonia is, it's the third most common movement disorder next to MS and Parkinson's. And I've never even heard of it. It like, it doesn't really have a lot of recognition, which I don't really know why. Um, and not a lot of doctors seem to work with it. Um, and also, I guess this is kind of a favor. Um, does anybody know of any dentists that know about dystonia because certain noises set it off like really really low bass or really shrill high-pitched things so and that could be in music and I don't know if it could possibly be one of those drills or whatever and I don't want to be laying in one of those seats and have one happen because that's gonna be super uncomfortable and hard for me to get up last but not least I definitely want to just tell everyone who is out there suffering with chronic pain or with dystonia, um, I am praying for you. I don't know you. I don't know your name, but I'm just praying for you in general. Um, God knows who you are. So that's enough for me. I hope y'all have a great weekend and I will get that other video up as soon as possible. Thanks. Bye.